Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. All right, I'm going to continue here. World growing less tolerant of Muslims and Jews, says report. We already covered this. State Department says anti-Semitic and anti-Islamic sentiments are growing. Kerry names Ira Foreman as U.S. anti-Semitism envoy. The State Department announced the appointment the same day it released its 2012 report on religious freedom that recorded a continued global increase in anti-Semitism. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry named Ira Foreman, who led President Obama's re-election campaign in the Jewish community, as his envoy to combat anti-Semitism. So it's interesting. Um, it's interesting because uh, in Europe uh, they have the same type um, tactics used against them as as far as um, immigration policies go. In the United States, now I'm not talking about people that come from different countries to become citizens and all that stuff. And uh, you know, um, basically, aren't uh, you know criminals and stuff? But I'm talking about people that from mostly Mexico or other countries. I mean, I know it's been going down. The numbers have been going down. Uh, but uh, still, I mean, you have a lot of immigrants um, in the United States. A lot of them are Mexican, and they, in, the, in in Europe, they use Muslims the same way to um, to basically to drain the social system. Uh, to change the government, change the, uh, change the, uh, the uh, policies. Uh, re really just create multiculturalism, a decrease uh, sense of unity uh, so that nobody, like I said, can actually unite to stop this. What is happening? What is happening? Well, to me personally, I think it's mostly steered by Jews or Zionist, uh, Zionist Jews um, and uh, for global domination, uh, just like you know, you have Christians that want global domination, you want Muslims to quote global domination, there's Jews that want global domination, and I think that they're the ones that head it up and get us all fighting. So, the more and more uh, inequality that um, that arises, uh, m more of the wealth that's accumulating to fewer and fewer hands, mostly them, uh, people are going to start to see um, where the problems are coming from. Stockholm riots challenge image of happy, generous state. I, I've actually heard it's a feminist hellhole, but either way, hundreds of young people have torched cars and attacked police in three nights of riots in immigrant suburbs of Sweden's capital. Shocking, a country has dodged the worst of the financial crisis but failed to defuse youth unemployment and resentment of asylum seekers. So this is the first time I've actually call, uh, said something about immigration, immigrant suburbs. They keep calling them youths, the youths two youths. Of the way they turn it around, they say the riots were less severe than those in the past two summers in Britain and France, but uh, provided a similar reminder that even in places less ravaged by the wealth consolidation heist uh, that happened in Greece and Spain, state belt tightening is tough as on the poor, especially immigrants. We see a society has become increasingly divided and where the gaps uh, both socially and economically are becoming larger. And the people out here are being hit the hardest. We have institutional racism. Again, so there's how they use that word. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, if you want to look out after your people, you're a racist. It's, uh, again, this goes back to ACLU. This goes back to, um, this goes back to uh, a Zionist tactic of political correctness. Of course, I'm a right-wing uh, racist just for saying that and talking about this stuff. Six teenage boys gang rape a teenage girl in Stockholm. Several teenage boys have been held for involvement. This is from March 6th of 2013 in the suspected gang rape of a teenage girl in northwest of Stockholm. They're just youth, right? Actually, it says, I told you they'd be Muslims. Their names are Mohammed Akralop, and I'm not going to try pronouncing all these words, but they're basically all immigrant Muslims. Schoolgirl 17 raped twice by a stranger in park after she lost her friends at a nightclub. So... I guess this is the individual, Mr. Asharif Arif. May 15, 2013, the Oxford sex ring and the preachers who teach young Muslim men that white girls are cheap. So it goes on here and says, brought shame not only to the city of dreaming spires, but also the local Muslim community. It says, in a sense of repulsion, outrage, I feel particularly strongly working as a Muslim leader and I'm in, in this neighborhood and trying to promote genuine cultural in integration. One of the victims who bravely gave evidence in the court told the newspaper afterwards that the men exclusively wanted white girls to abuse. 
But as so often in fearful, politically correct modern Britain, there is a craving unwillingness to face up to the reality. We are told child sex abuse happens in all communities, that white men are really far more likely to be abusers, as we've been shown by the fallout from the Jimmy Seville case. One particular misguided commentary argued that the predator's religion was irrelevant. On a side note, because I just saw this looking for another article from Raw Story, uh, NYPD data, whites more likely to be carrying drugs and guns than minorities. So it says here in a detailed analysis, uh, they revealed Wednesday that white people are much more likely to be carrying drugs and guns than minorities, despite making up a tiny fraction of individual police subjected to so-called stop and frisk searches. Mother of Oxford grooming sex gang that we were just talking about, Pear, blames their victim. She says schoolgirls should have been playing with toys. So the mother said that no one was pressured. And there's the individuals. On the news, they say girls went from Oxford to London on the train. Are they not old enough then? Nobody can feel sorry for them unless they're sorry themselves. All right, next up, uh, Romford, teenage sex ring suspect. Ahmed appears in court, so a man from Romford has appeared in court alongside three others accused of running a teen prostitution re, uh, ring. So, so March 13, 2013, women fights off Blackburn Park attacker from May 18th. So grabbed her from uh, behind in a park. So it says here, the victim dropped her phone and was able to fight off her attacker. She said, luckily, um, the woman managed to push him off and shout him, shout at him. And he walked away. The victim was white, so I'm keeping my options open about motives. I'm not ruling anything out, be it racial or sexual attack or an attempted robbery. She so had a schoolgirl grabbed by sex offender. It says this is from the 17th of May. So a teenager was walking along, as she was approached by the offender, started talking to her and walking aside. From uh, it says here he's wearing another hoodie. I guess it was like the last person a hoodie. They were described as an Asian male. Face fears let down white trash victims. Nevertheless, it does a terrible disservice to the victims of Britain's increasingly prevalent sex rings not to acknowledge the elephant in the room until we properly address the fact that the perpetrators of most of these recent high-profile crimes are mostly exclusively Asian, then society would continue to be complicit in them. An obsession with political correctness let down terribly the Oxford teenage girls who were victims of the des despicable gang of abusers. The fear of being branded racist meant no one would dare to state the obvious. So the prevailing attitude was that these girls were merely white trash deserving nothing better than to be passed around as playthings to satisfy the cravings of this group of Asian men. Afghan interpreters to get right to live in UK. Up to 600 Afghan interpreters who worked alongside British troops are to be given the right to live in the United Kingdom. Five-year visa will be offered initially to those who worked on the front line for a year or more covering around half of the interpreters. The truth at last, Peter Mandelson admits Labour sent out search parties to bring migrants here after losing the votes of the working class. So it goes on here and it says here, it says here it was the, also the moment that the rising generation of Labour politicians realized that they could never again rely on the votes on the white working class, that they would have to import a new working class from overseas so it goes on here, and this uh, Mandelson uh, said basically they sent out search parties to encourage them to come over. The situation is different now. Entry to the labor market of many people of non-British origin is hard for people who are finding it very difficult to find jobs, who find it hard to keep jobs. Lastly, mass immigration was never once mentioned in any labor manifesto. No one voted for it. A policy which was to change the face of Britain irrevocably was smuggled in under the radar purely for a long-term electoral and short-term economic van advantage. Well, that they're just the people that carry it out. Um, there's more to it than that. There's, you know, all kinds of reports and documents and and stuff about what, it, what it's doing to change society. That's the real purpose. Get them our huddled masses for May 20th, 2013, why America should swap its retirees, patients, and students for skilled immigrant labor so talking about immigration reform is back on the policy agenda. So it says here, can it help the United States out of the economic pickle in which we find itself? It's not a pickle, it's a system of enslavement. So it says the global financial crisis, i.e. wealth consolidation operation, reinforced the long-term trend of stagnating incomes, shrinking wealth, and diminishing opportunities for the U.S. middle class. So, so it says here that... Um, these trends should be embraced and enhanced, talking about patients traveling to Thailand for treatment, retirees enjoying the low cost of living in Latin America. 
while students are going overseas. This new form of globalization will boost the purchasing power of U.S. consumers by providing greater and cheaper access to key services. So instead of uh, helping to provide programs for the people that live here in the United States, the citizens, and make them more skilled, it says, additionally, if U.S. immigrants that are medical or education tourists seek opportunities, it says here, maybe other countries could help convince the U.S. to relax its barriers to foreign entrepreneurs, including scientists, doctors, and engineers. Britain should be like China. So GP tells mom of two she is irresponsible to want more children. So it says here, Charlotte Corner 21, a travel agent on maternity leave was reduced to tears after a do uh, by her doctor after uh, basically she went on to get a sh prescription for tonsillitis. She claims a doctor started to lecture her about having too many children when she mentioned she would like to have a third with her 28-year-old partner. So apparently she said that she started explaining that uh, they both come from big families so they wanted more children. Then he said he didn't think coming from big families justified having more kids. He then started talking about how the country is overpopulated and anyone who has more than two children is irresponsible. Said that she was shocked by the conversation of saying that um, their country should be more like China, the one-child policy. She said that she went in for some antibiotics and came out with a lecture. And never mind the immigration that's creating this quote overpopulation in these uh, in these countries and stuff like that, draining the benefits of the, the the social system, which is you know benefits and stuff like that. But he says, I feel like I was being judged the way he was going on about the benefits. I told him my partner works 70 hours a week as a courier, and I'm on maternity leave, and we weren't weren't on benefits. Interesting, because he says actually too, he goes, uh, you know, if your uh, partner has works 70 hours a week, the, he doesn't have enough time for children already. Why would you want to have more? So. Uh, you know that's that just goes to show you why um, why they wanted to make it so that uh, both parents were outside the house so they didn't have time for children that the state and media would raise them social engineers or you just wouldn't have them Britain's House of Commons votes to this is big news right now London shocked by terrorist machete killing video shows men explaining uh, that they killed man in retribution for Muslim deaths so they're calling it a terrorist a terrorist attack these two guys were crazed. They dragged him from the pavement and dumped his body in the middle of the road. Then they hung around waving guns and knives in the air and asking bystanders to take their pictures if they wanted to do, be on TV or something. So that's one of the individuals. Uh, we swear by Almighty Allah we will never stop fighting you. The only reason we have done this is because Muslims are dying every day. The British soldier is an eye for an, for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We must fight them. I apologize that women had to witness this, but in... Uh, but in our land, our women have to see the same. So what's the the most despicable, despicable thing about this is that they're calling it a terrorist attack so it can play into the hands that we need to be over there bombing and killing uh, people in these countries. And we're creating the terrorists. We know that, that the drone strikes are creating more terrorists, more hatred. So it's just it's just crazy, you know, when you have people like David Cameron saying, oh, yeah, you know, this is a... This is a terrorist attack. Strong indications this is a terrorist attack. Well, why don't you stop supporting fucking terrorists and maybe you won't and close your freaking borders to, to foreigners like this and maybe you won't have issues like this happening. But no, it legitimizes uh, the government who does not represent any of the British people, um, just like the United States doesn't represent any of the U.S. citizens. Uh, they go on for these uh, wars for not just resources, uh, global domination. Uh, but like I said, to create refugees, to, to mix everybody up into a multiculturalist uh, soup. So the citizens of these countries do not have any say in what's going on right now. This is completely, this is done completely by uh, puppets such as Cameron or Obama or Bush or whoever, Blair. Some of the footage actually said that you people will never be safe, remove your government, they don't care about you. Britain's House of Commons votes to legalize gay marriage in uh, England and Wales. Here you go. Notre Dame suicide, anti-gay marriage sacrifice. Benir also slammed African immigration and death hailed as political act. The suicide of a far-right activist, Paris, yesterday is being hailed as a political act, often uh, by far-right leaders. He was decrying uh, both the country's recent legalization of gay marriage and immigration from Africa. He was 78 years old, and he shot himself in front of about 1,500 people. He says, I believe it's necessary to sacrifice myself to break with the lethargy that is overwhelming us. I am killing myself to awaken the slumbering consciousness. It was four days after another unusual suicide in Paris when a 50-year-old man shot himself in front of a dozen school children. So, he's warning the future, right?
It's a warning to the future. This is what happening. This is what's happening. He also said we are reaching a time when words must be backed up with act. The real peril was calling on activists to take measures to protect the French and European identities. Lastly, Obama meets with semi-illegal immigrants to push amnesty bill. Thank you.